I love watching the Warp Speed 3D print. You start with metal powder, but instead of a laser coming by and sintering and melting the material together, it uses high pressure air to actually blast it into a metal build plate. And that kinetic energy builds up the material. It really unlocks a very interesting future vision for supply chains. I think the use case that it unlocks of being able to print near the point of need, have distributed manufacturing capabilities so that instead of having to make everything in one centralized location, you can have the ability to make the part near where you need it. The Speed 3D Warp Speed system behind me is a cold spray system. We joke sometimes that cold spray feels like a little bit of a misnomer because it actually heats up to about 600 degrees Celsius before spraying the metal. But that's significantly below the melt temperature of the metals that we use. It's able to print in copper, aluminum, tool steel, stainless steel, nickel and bronze. By heating up the powder below the melt point, but a good amount, you kind of get a jump start where then if you add kinetic energy by using high pressure air to blast it into a metal build plate at about Mach 3 actually, that energy ends up fusing the particles together. You need to do some heat treat to anneal the parts. You need to do some post-processing because that spraying, it's shockingly precise, especially with the new phaser nozzle that we have, but it isn't nearly as precise as a laser going by and melting particles at like a 50 micron spot size. And so rather than starting with a stock piece of, of metal that you might have to cut 50, 60% of it away, you can start with a near net shape that's 90% where you want to get and now you're only removing and surface finishing a very small amount. Now the Speed 3D is unique even for cold spray in that it just uses compressed air. So we've got some air compressors here. When I called up the air compressor company, they thought I was crazy because I was asking for 400 PSI. They said, you must be wrong. So it is a pretty unique setting still, but a lot of other cold spray systems require carrier gas like helium, which unlocks some different material properties potentially, but it's a lot harder to source and it's a lot harder to maintain. One of the reasons we're working with Speed 3D is they're looking at printing in what they call austere environments. This machine is able to print relatively large pieces and that's around 45 kilograms. So oil and gas, remote drilling, mining, things like that, that need strong metal parts to stay up and running, that metal parts are breaking all the time out in the field, and it might be at least hours, if not days, to get a traditional resupply in there, but every hour you're down, you're losing a million dollars of revenue. You know, having a machine like this out in the field is a really interesting possibility. Gets you back up into the uh, operation a lot faster. But even for more traditional supply chains, instead of having a warehouse full of parts that I know I eventually will need, but I don't know when, instead I just have powder and a printer, and when I need something I make it, a few days later it's ready to go, that is a lot cheaper and easier to maintain than a warehouse full of two years of supplies. The leaps and bounds that the machines and the materials and the processes and the software have undergone in the less than a decade, the more we use the machine, the more good ideas we're getting. And so it's very exciting to see what might happen in the next decade. We're just kind of at the beginning of really unlocking the potential that this, this represents.